Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we've got an episode of Break the Bank. On episodes like this, we're going to take one of our Commander's Quarters decks and up the budget to $100. Sometimes you just love a deck so much that you're willing to put a little more into it to get those upgrades. And these same rules are going to apply for our overall deck cost. So shipping will be included in the price, Commanders at $10 or less are going to be included, and Basic Lands will not be included. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Liam, who's been supporting this channel for over a year now as a Golden Pink Tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without amazing patrons like Liam. So today we're going to break the bank on Liam's Nethroy Apex of Death deck. If you haven't seen that episode yet, you're probably going to want to check it out first. But if you've already seen it, then let's jump into it. With an upgraded budget, we can add in some new cards, so let's start things off with what's in. First up, let's upgrade this deck with Stitcher Supplier. It's a 1-1 zombie for a black, and when it enters the battlefield or dies, we mill 3. Milling 6 for 1 mana on a creature is huge. Next up, let's add in World Shaper a 3-3 Merfolk Shaman for 3 and a green. When it attacks, we mill 3, and then when it dies, we put all the land cards in our graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. So this can be a great source of repeatable mill, and it's also going to ramp us a ton when it dies. And then let's upgrade this deck with Underrealm Lich, which is a 4-3 Zombie Elf Shaman for 3 black green. It says if you would draw a card instead look at the top 3 cards of your library, then put 1 into your hand and the rest into your graveyard, and it's got pay for life, it gains indestructible time of turn, tap it. So this essentially turns card draw into milling, and it protects itself, which is fantastic. Next up, let's upgrade this deck with some Sacrifice Outlets with Ashton's Altar, Altar of Dementia, and Greater Good. Ashton's Altar has Sacrifice a Creature, add Colors Colors to your mana pool. And then Altar of Dementia says Sacrifice a Creature, target player mills cards equal to the Sacrifice Creature's power. Greater Good says Sacrifice a Creature, draw cards equal to the Sacrifice Creature's power, then discard 3 cards. So first off, being able to sacrifice creatures for free is fantastic for this deck. There are plenty of creatures with ETBs or even Lethal Battlefield triggers that we can then get again with Nethroy. On top of that, these generate mana or mill ourselves even further to provide even more value. A fantastic finisher that we can add into this deck, though, is Living Death. It says each player exiles all creature cards from their graveyard, then sacrifices all creatures they control, then puts all the cards they exiled this way onto the battlefield. So this is yet another way to reanimate our creatures like Nethroy, but this one can actually set our opponents back too. In the right situation, this can really turn the game into our favor and help us finish off our opponents. But we're also going to want to add in some bigger threats like Pelucranos Unchained. It's a 0-0 zombie hydra that costs 2 black green, and when it comes into play, it comes into play with 6 plus plus 1 counters on it, and if it escapes, it comes into play with 12. If damage would be dealt to it while it has a plus plus 1 counter on it, we prevent that damage, remove that many plus plus 1 counters from it. And it has pay 1 black green, and fights another creature. So this is repeatable removal that we can also escape if we need to. And then there's Multani Yavamaya's Avatar, which is a 0-0 elemental avatar with reach and trample that costs 4 green green. It gets plus minus 1 for each land we control on each land in our graveyard. And by paying 1 into green, we can bounce 2 lands back to our hand and return it from our graveyard to our hand. So Multani is a huge recurrable threat that can really decimate our opponents. And next up, let's add in Pathbreaker Ibex, which can be a fantastic finisher for this deck. It's a 3-3 goat for 4 green green, and when it attacks, creatures we control gain trample and get plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the greatest power among creatures we control. Again, we've got a ton of huge creatures in this deck, so this can pump our creatures to absurd amounts. And finally, let's upgrade one of our lands by adding in Caves of Koilos. It can tap for colors or it can tap for white or black and it deals 1 damage to us. Now since we added some cards in, we've got to take some out, so it's time to move on to what's out. With our upgrades, we've got some better ways to fill our graveyard, so we're going to be taking out Ransack the Lab, Grapple the Past, and Mulch. And so we're also going to be taking out Grind Clock, Greater Moss Dog, and Moonlight Bargain. Again, we've just got more efficient ways to fill our graveyard with our upgrades. Next up, we're going to take out Overrun, because we just have better finishers now. And similarly, we've got some better threats as well, so we're going to take out Hero's Bane, Undergrowth Scavenger, and Drake's Town Forgotten. And finally, since we put one land in, let's take out Forest. But now let's jump into the price breakdown and see how our deck compares to the competition. The average Nethroy EDH rec deck is going to set you back $483.82. Even with all the upgrades, our deck is still going to be much more affordable, coming in at $99.86. And if you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. But now it's my turn to hear from you, so in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. 
Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.